Hey guys, Objector here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the importance of your controller layout for Halo 5. The gameplay you're seeing in the background is pretty clutch as it comes down to a score of 99 to 99, and I get the final kill to help secure the win, so make sure you stick around to the end to catch it. And with that, let's get started. Controller layout in Halo is probably more crucial than it is for any other first person shooter because of the longer times to kill. These longer times to kill means you can do more to try to outmaneuver and outplay your opponent in the gunfight. When I picked up Halo 5, the first thing I did was go through the button layouts looking for the things I wanted. I then jumped into the campaign and switched between three different layouts in the first two missions before deciding on the one I wanted. Even knowing the specifics I was looking for in my layout, which I'll go over later, I still swapped between multiple layouts before deciding on the one that felt the most natural and beneficial for my game style. Now before we talk about my recommendations, I want to go through a little bit of the history of button layouts in Halo so you have a better understanding of why I chose what I did as the most important things to look for in your layout. Way back in Halo 2 when Bungie first introduced PvP, there was only one button layout where your jump was on the A and grenades were the left trigger. With the long times to kill, jumping became a core strategy for avoiding as much damage as possible. However, in order to jump, you have to take your thumb off the aiming thumbstick in order to press A. This split second of not being able to aim is crucial for to winning or losing a gunfight. The highly competitive players and pros realized this and adopted the claw grip, which if you don't know is a way of holding the controller with your right hand in a claw shape so that your index finger was on the face buttons and you pull the trigger with either your middle or ring finger. Highly uncomfortable, but highly effective. Then when Halo 3 came out, Bungie introduced the button layouts and of note, Bumper Jumper, which remapped the jump to the left bumper. This allowed for more people to jump into the competitive scene as they no longer needed the claw grip to compete at the higher levels. It also allowed players to customize the layout based on their playstyle. For instance, I relied heavily on the melee attack and chose the boxer layout which remapped the melee to my left trigger. So what was the point of this history lesson? Some actions are crucial such as jump or melee and you want to be able to perform these actions without taking your thumb off the thumbstick so you don't lose the ability to aim. The actions I look for are based on my preferences and my playstyle. However, I believe it is a good place to start. So the things I looked for were jumping, boosting, grenade, and melee. As we talked about, jumping is more important than in Halo than most first person shooters as a way to maneuver during a gunfight and with the ability to clamor, it's used more now than ever. If you're like me and play with a scuff controller or the new Xbox Elite controllers with paddles on the back, you can leave this on the A button as you can still hit it without having to leave the thumbstick. But if not, jumping would be the first thing I'd prioritize. Next, I knew for me personally I wanted the boost ability to be on one of my bumpers. Again, adding to the mobility of my character. And doing so has given me a noticeable advantage in escaping losing gunfights or even maneuvering around the map. And lastly, I would look at the grenades and melee buttons, depending on your playstyle and what you feel you use the most. With all this in mind, I ended up with the fish stick layout. Since I didn't have to worry about remapping my jump, this layout allows for boost and grenade to be on my bumpers and the melee attack to be on my thumbstick. So to recap, try to find a layout that allows for you to get your most used or important actions without having to move your thumb from the thumbstick. Not losing that split second of aiming will make a huge difference in your game. And just like the sensitivity settings, be sure to give a new button layout around 10 games or a few missions in the campaign for your mind to adjust to the changes and build up your muscle memory. While I know most people don't have a scuff controller, so fish stick won't be the best layout for you, I hope I help give you some suggestions on what to look for in the controller layout and point you in the right direction for the best layout for you. I hope you liked this video and I hope you learned something new. And if you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. If you haven't seen my previous video on selecting the best look sensitivity, click on the link on the screen now. Until next time, this is Objector, signing off.